Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today I want to talk about why the economic collapse of 2020 has only just begun. First off, I want to say I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. Consider this, that the market is where it was last year. In terms of the Dow Jones and the S&P 500, it's essentially the same as where it was last year around this time. Now ask yourself this, are the conditions last year and right now the same? Last year was their record unemployment with half the world on lockdown and a pandemic devastating the planet? That means that either the market was severely undervalued then, which I don't think anybody would say it was because it was still pretty high. I think right now it's fair to assume that the market is overvalued and there's a lot of people who are going to be trapped by this current uptrend, which I don't understand how it could possibly last. It just doesn't make any sense that it's not going to tank again. There is going to be another bearish dive in all this. Once this stimulus hype fizzles out and it doesn't have the effect that they think it's going to have, there's going to be a lot of blood in the streets and that's when a lot of the big players are going to come in and scoop up these securities. We're in the midst of an unprecedented pandemic. Never before has half of the world been on lockdown. We're seeing record high unemployment levels. We are seeing people who are going to be foreclosing on their mortgages soon because they can't pay them. We're seeing businesses who can't pay their leases, businesses who were already, many of them, in debt and over leveraged due to the fact that they have to pay such high real estate costs or just the fact that, you know, people weren't buying stuff in the first quarter. There's the fact that the industrial engine of the world in the first quarter wasn't producing anything and now nobody is out consuming anything. So when you look at the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones, and you see right now it's between 23,000 and 24,000. The low was 18,000 and that's arguably where it should be right now. The only reason why it isn't there is the same reason why the stock market was so high in the first place. And that's due to a lot of speculation and a lot of new people in the market. So there's many, many new people who've entered the market in the last few years due to just the ease of, of access to the stock market. You know, it used to be that you had to go through a whole process to buy a stock, you know, back in the day. Now you can get an app. You Most banks will have uh, apps that you can do direct investing through. So it's very easy for the average person to get in. So what we're seeing right now, I think, is a final fleecing of the sheep. We're seeing a lot of talk about how the deaths are gonna be lower than what was previously expected and how you know, the, the cases are plateauing. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute, why I think that's very suspect. So all of a sudden there's this refound optimism in the market again, and people who are want to buy the bottom and don't wanna miss out are getting back into the market already, which is a huge no-no in my opinion. Consider this, record unemployment numbers. All of these people who are out of work, yes, they're gonna get a little stimulus check, what do you think they're gonna spend that on? They're gonna spend it on bills and food. That's it. They're not gonna be going out with disposable income and buying a bunch of different products which are gonna keep all of these industries propped up. And that doesn't stop at the tech sector. Facebook, uh, Google, a lot of these places rely on advertising. And if nobody is buying anything, then nobody is advertising anything. We still have the time lag of all the quarterly earnings reports, which are definitely gonna be down because this stuff was going on in the first quarter. And they're definitely gonna be down in the second quarter because nobody is out shopping or doing anything. So let's talk about history for a minute. And no, I'm not going to attempt to fully understand what's going on right now using historical examples because this is a very unique set of circumstances. Yes, there have been pandemics in the past, but there have never been lockdowns on the scale as we've had them today. 
Yes, there has been pandemics in the past, but there hasn't been the global just-in-time supply chain as there is today. So there's a lot of differences. And even with the historical bubbles of the past, uh, those same factors aren't a factor here, although in many cases they are. You know, talking about the over-leveraging, so many people in debt, individual debt, uh, business debt, uh, student loans, and inject this huge stimulus of funny money that they're going to borrow from the future generations in order to somehow try to resuscitate this economy, which I think it's going to fail. And I'm gonna tell you why. So here's the thing, when you go back in history, and if you go back to the 1918 pandemic, and you look at the Dow Jones, what it did, you could almost perfectly map it on to what is going on right now. Now again, we're in a unique time with a whole different set of circumstances right now. Nonetheless, you will see that the market started to tank during the first wave and second wave of the pandemic, and they bottomed out, and then it kind of bounced back up again because people thought the worst had passed. One of the big things I've been noticing already in my community is that a lot of people are already starting to get complacent. There's more traffic on the road, there's more people out there doing stuff, and there was recently reports of infected people in a local grocery store here. So in spite of their best efforts to keep the spread of this down, it's still occurring and it's going to continue to occur because people are going to get complacent again. Those cases may well get on the rise again as people get more comfortable and people start to think that the situation has been resolved. And that is why this lockdown is going to likely persist for a couple months from now at least. At least till June, possibly till July and August. So what happened then when the stock market went down to 18,000 points? Was this massive, what you might call an overcorrection? Well, now it corrected in the opposite way. But make no mistake, we are still in a recession. There is half a million documented people in the US who are infected with this right now, meaning that there's probably 5 million. We could speculate that we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, and I may be wrong about this, but they're doing roughly the same amount of tests every day. I'm not sure if it's like 100,000 tests a day. And these tests seem to be yielding the same amount of cases. So does that mean that if they're doubling that testing, that they're going to see a double amount of cases in that period of time? It's hard to say. So what I'm saying is there may be a lot more cases out there than we know about. Consider that in the Great Depression, there was a trend throughout the Great Depression where it was going downwards. It was like a downward staircase, but you'd always get these upswings, okay? And every time there was an upswing, it was like another fleecing of the sheep. And what happens is all the little guys, you know, they, they hear fear of missing out happens. And so they start buying, they think that, you know, they're coming out of the recession or the depression. Sure enough, there's another economic downturn and the same cycle continues all the way down the line. Now, even after the 1929 stock market crash, remember that in the 1920s, after they dealt with all of that Spanish flu stuff, the market started to soar. And that's because there was a lot of new players coming to the market. You know, they invented the, the telephone. So the average Joe could start buying stocks and people were starting to buy stocks using debt. And remember that throughout the 20s, the, the stock market just grew exponentially. So people just thought to themselves, if I borrow $100 and I buy 100 in stock and I make 10 bucks by the end of the week, that's a fairly good deal. And by 1929, the bubble burst and there was this rapid sell-off. And then what happened was some of the big players stepped in to try to arrest this descent. And what they did was they bought stocks, which were selling for very low, at very high prices. And that brought the, the price of those stocks up once again. Now, the effect that had was to cause a lot of people to buy back in after the stock market crash. That caused a lot of people to buy back in and get fleeced one more time before the descent into the Great Depression of the 1930s. I personally think the same thing is happening right now. I don't know who's pulling the levers, but Someone is trying to inspire confidence in the market once again, so people put some more money in there, but I worry that 
the people are going to get fleeced once again. That's just my theory of what's going to happen. I don't think this market has approached the bottom quite yet. And we're not really going to know the bottom until the numbers start coming in. We need to let this stimulus uh, work its way through the system. And when it does finally work its way through and we're still on lockdown and then they have to do another round of stimulus stimuluses and another round, here's what I suspect is probably going to happen. Every time they propose a new stimulus, it's going to go up a little bit. But given enough time, it's going to start to go down a little bit. And then they're going to propose another stimulus and then it's going to go up a little bit and it's going to keep happening until it hits rock bottom. Now, another big factor here is the upcoming United States election. Bernie fell off and that excited a lot of people on Wall Street because they now think that they're not going to have to be under the gun of his policies that he was proposing. Now, I want to tread lightly on this political issue because you're always going to offend somebody no matter who you criticize. But what I will say is that I have a gut feeling that Joe Biden is not going to be going up against Trump in 2020. It's just a gut feeling. I just don't foresee it happening. There's too much of a trend towards populism and anti-establishmentarianism for a guy like Biden to really win the people over, especially during a time like this. People are going to be grinding their teeth if this continues come the election time. So this is just my guess that I think the Democrats have something else up their sleeves for 2020. Because let's be honest, Biden will get devoured by Trump. I think everybody can agree about that. Even Trump said that Bernie would have been a harder candidate. Biden in no way, shape or form makes sense in the current climate that we're in. Now, a lot of the other Democratic candidates who fell off were trying to vie for positions in Biden's hopeful administration like Telsey Gabbard put out this advertisement which came as quite a disappointment to a lot of her supporters because her and Biden were diametrically opposed on a lot of things but she put out an ad which really gave her full support to him so it makes me wonder are the Democrats planning on getting Biden out of there and bringing somebody else in to go up against Trump in 2020 it's hard to say but the reason why I bring all this stuff up is because all of these are gonna be factors. I think it's incredibly premature and irresponsible for anybody to suggest that we're out of a bear market right now. Just because numerically it indicates that there's a lot of volatility. It's one of the most volatile three months of the entire stock market's history. So this correction is just a reflection of that. I'm predicting that it's gonna go down a lot further from here. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you enjoy the video. Once again, we're shooting from the CanadianPreparedness.com warehouse where we sell premium survival gear, no junk, only stuff which has been tried and tested out in the field by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. So go check it out. Thanks for watching guys, Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER. All one word in all caps.